so as you all know we move we are moving puppet to a plugin and uh, partially the reason was that uh, red hat is taking away support from puppet so uh, our resources there are not gonna be like full support I will still support the plugin as best as to my knowledge, but uh, my time is limited and it will not be my priority. So given that the plugin is only in my hands now and maybe the, the foreman organization admins have merge rights there, but uh, directly to the plugin only I have merge rights. So that's kind of a really bad situation for the plugin and we would like to do something about it. So uh, we are definitely looking for someone who would take care of the pl plugin and uh, it would be nice if I could present it to someone uh, and I would get some feedback on some decisions I made in the design of the plugin because I'm using facets and it's bit written, not just pure copy paste of code from the core. So uh, given that I, I've done all of that work alone, um, I had to make make the decisions myself. So if there is some uh, light feedback, I would be glad and we can still change thing or two. And afterwards, uh, someone who would be required to take care of the plugin, at least keep it functional, but there are definitely improvements needed. Like we are using jQuery and uh, we would love to phase out jQuery in the future. So that's like the minimal, minimal uh, improvement that we already know that will be needed. But definitely even uh, the plugin can improve and support the puppet much better than it does now. So if there would, there would be people who would like to improve it, that would be awesome. But the minimal requirements are keep it stable. And if there are some issues with that, just fix it. So uh, you've kind of volunteered, but uh, you don't know probably what to what you volunteered. So <laughs> Right now we have uh, a branch that contains the drop of Puppet from core and we have the plugin in done stage but uh, untested properly in production so definitely might have some issues. Um. So um, I think one point to mention is the timeline that the plan is to have um, yeah. 2.5 still come out with Puppet code in it and then drop it right after branching. Um, so we have some time to test that the plugin works properly and we can rely on it um, to properly replace the existing code. Um, and uh, it, right now it's designed to work uh, side by side with the existing code inside Foreman. And after we remove some of the code from Foreman, um, we can clean up some of the code in the plugin as well. Um, and I had another point which I forgot. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, uh, and just to mention that it's not all of the Puppet functionality that's being extracted. I think we mentioned that several times in the various posts. Um, 
but it's worth also mentioning here for the benefit of people maybe watching this recording, I guess the folks on this call are already aware of it, uh, but the functionality that is being extracted from core is basically the ability to assign environments, puppet classes and variables to hosts. Um, so for example, fact parsing, report parsing, though that functionality would still remain in by form and core. Um, so this is mostly about um, kind of the ENC functionality um, and the ability to kind of manage that uh, at, a, um, at a level. Um, and I think that also going forward, it would be very useful for the rest of the configuration management plugins that we have kind of a same uh, level of support for all of them. And perhaps see where, we, where it makes sense to unify things. And um, for example, one thing that's remaining in core is uh, lookup keys and lookup values of the base classes that are being used both by um, Ansible variables and puppet class parameters. And I think also sort uh, whatever they're called grains or whatever. Um, so I think, for example, that's one thing that's going to remain in core, but for users who don't use uh, any configuration management that they won't see anything about that in the instance. Um, so um, a lot of users uh, on the last year's community survey, about half of the new users actually didn't use any sort of configuration management. Um, so those users would get a simpler uh, UI, a simpler uh, experience with Bowman, which we all know is quite complex. And that's also part of the motivation for extracting Puppet. Okay, thank you. So, can I finish the recap of the progress? Uh, or any any questions to what's being done to what Tomer said? Okay. So yeah, I have the branch uh, that will drop and drop puppet from core. And that branch is uh, mostly done. There are minor things uh, that I take on myself to finish, unless someone wants to take a look at that. Uh, and the plugin is in done, done state, needs testing. What's missing is Hammer plugin, but um, we are working on it. But uh, there, we hope to to make it, but we don't we don't know about it. So if someone would like to help, uh, sure. And then there is a documentation which has not been touched yet. So that's the state of the effort, and uh, whatever you want to help uh, with. But mainly we need the plugin maintainers. So I have a question mm -hmm. uh, regarding the Hammer plugin. Mm -hmm. um, I guess there was already a Hammer plugin or a, a Hammer functionalities uh, for maintaining uh, Puppet resources. Mm -hmm. Or is it, a, is it about moving the Hammer stuff from core to a separate Hammer plugin? Yeah, oh, okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. So Amir has started working on that, um, but it's still a work in progress. Basically, if uh, once we remove the API endpoints from core, if you use Amir Foreman uh, without a plugin that talks to the new API endpoints, you would just get a message that this endpoint is not available if you try to do one of the pop comments. But uh, just it's just been more of an effort of cleaning up to that um, so in case you don't use the plugin, you don't have those commands inside Hamel. Um, similar to how we have Hamel plugins for various other plugins, um, so the Hamel plugins should match basically what plugins you have installed in core. 
So it's not really a breaking issue, it's just a matter of cleaning up and uh, having a similar experience. So, um, well, as you know, we from Atix, we want to uh, help you to have a, a good support of a Puppet. And yes, we want to start as soon as possible um, to get into the development of the Puppet plugin. Um, so one, the question is, how can we schedule it so that we can work on it? And are there any um, resources available how to start um, to uh, do programming in that area? So is there a documentation? Is there a forklift, for example, which is already preparing foreman with the, well, with the required branch of foreman and which is using the foreman puppet plugin? So that would maybe help us to to get into the development of that plugin. There is nothing of that sort, but uh, I'm here, and if you tell me what would be needed and helpful, I can definitely try. If it's a week of work, probably not. But if it's some forklift command or short uh, documentation, high-level documentation of what's, what has been done, I can definitely do that. I think we also need to distinguish between two different periods of work. Uh, the first is up until the 2.5 branching, in which the plugin should stay compatible with what is currently in form and call. Um, and then post branching once we drop um, the code from core, um, we could, I would assume that would be probably a major version bump for the plugin um, to be working with uh, without the code in core and that would also include the load, a lot of the cleanup. That yeah. is um, um, possible once it doesn't we need to, you know, check if something exists in core or not and so on. Okay, so basically the aim is to have uh, feature parity um, once the the um, code is dropped from, from core and then um, we would kind of try to, you know, at least um, maintain or, or try to uh, keep the functionality in the plugin. Um, of course, like improvements are obviously welcome. Um, and we would try to now i'm i'm wondering if there are like any or if there's like a lot of missing functionality right now in in the uh, puppet environment because from i i kind of believe that the um you know puppet has been there for a long time and has had a long time to mature so I guess, like, just from the the features that are there, I think it's it's quite uh, you know quite evolved and um, and kind of works. So I'm I'm wondering if we should kind of um, first try to focus on setting up like like a structure so we can maintain um, the plugin and and kind of keep it working, um, and then um, maybe. Um, yeah, discuss how we kind of handle feature requests and stuff like that um, at a later point. So I think that makes sense. Um, I would say that uh, in the past quite a few years, there hasn't been a lot of changes uh, with the regards to Puppet and Puppet itself has progressed. So there are probably newer, new features that were added in um, recent years to Puppet that don't yet uh, have parity inside Foreman. One example that comes to mind is importing um, class uh, um, parameters types that right now uh, there's a way to get that from the Puppet server um, and that's never been implemented uh, inside Foreman, uh, but I'm sure those 
other things that uh, we're not even aware of because it was basically kind of it's walking nobody touched it state for uh, for quite a while and i think uh, that, that's also a benefit of having it in a plugin is that it can move uh, faster and adapt to changes that come from the puppet world um, so um, there's definitely uh, places to improve but i think the first step could be to make sure um, that it's working properly uh, kind of, let's say for the next few months um, until we're certain that it's as stable as it was prior to the change. Uh, and then afterwards, it would be definitely be great to improve it for those who do use Puppet. And uh, I'm sure that I know there's a lot of people who do uh, and would be great to get them new features as well. Okay, um, I, have, I have one more question and that's regarding a smart proxy. Are there any plans to is extract the Puppet uh, code base from Smart Proxy Core as well? Uh, they, there were plans, but basically we've dropped them until we improve the uh, Smart Proxy, but I, I don't recall what was the end goal in the Smart Proxy. But it was really tough uh, to do it right now. And uh, Avoid has some improvements in mind that would make it much easier to to get out. And smart proxy, it's not that big of, big of a deal because it's not user facing. OK. Yeah, those. Uh plenty of stuff to do on the proxy. Uh, right now, the proxy is, has uh, the Puppet module that has um, also all the code to support all, really all the versions of Puppet that we should pop, drop. Um, Evo did start working on it. I guess uh, the main outcome was we should probably first refactor it before extracting it to a proxy, module, uh, proxy plugin. Um, just so it's less work to do. Um, and some of the functionality, again, would remain in core. Um, so things like uh, reports, facts, handling, CA, signing, um, all of that would still remain in core for the people who use uh, Foreman as a CMDB, but use here or some other external uh, node classifier instead. Um, so that would still be useful. Okay, so I guess um, you know we from from DM Tech would also like to help in the in maintaining the new uh, the new format core plugin or the, the new format puppet plugin um, with the uh, extracted core functionality. Um, I'm I'm wondering, you know, what what is our goal like for this meeting? Like, what are the the next steps that we we kind of need to take to uh, make sure there's like like a smooth transition, and uh, kind of to ensure the the plugin is probably maintained. So first of all, I would love to hear what you guys need to um, start working on it to get into into the plugin itself to learn it the structure. If it would, if some session would be helpful, and then uh, I would like to hear how much uh, time you are willing to invest and what are your uh, priorities regarding the plugin, and who would like to become maintainer and then probably set some some rules to that okay so i i guess our priority is to have a working uh, puppet support in foreman because we kind of use that uh, you know in in production and and we don't have any plans on on dropping that now we have uh, yeah 
four-figure amount of, of uh, systems we manage with uh, with Puppet, have a very like mature code base and stuff like that. And it would be like a huge investment to to changing that to some something else. So our motivation is kind of um, to um, you know kind of protect that investment by um, making sure there's a working puppet uh, support in Foreman. Mm -hmm. Got it. And Bernard is basically agreeing. <laughs> it will be the similar situation. Yeah, that's the same for us. So uh, we have the same target. So to have a stable puppet, as we also want to have a stable um, Ansible and uh, Salt support. So we're working on on Salt also, and of course we want to make sure that the puppet story is as good as the Ansible story is. Um, so in every, everything what is necessary to do that and to jump onto the train um, to get started with the puppet development, we are happy to have a, well, a feedback or some documentation or a, a, something like a plan how to get into that development. Right. So I would need to hear from you what would be needed. Like what would help you the most to get get on, understand some decisions if a session or high level documentation or well i think um for starters i think we we kind of need access you know so kind of uh you know getting permissions i guess on github um and probably on on ruby gems um and then i guess we would need to kind of familiarize with uh, or get get familiar with the code and um, I guess it's, it would probably be best to kind of like test the functionality, the current functionality and, and see what's missing. Um, so I guess we, we could um, kind of you know, invest some time and um, make sure the plugin kind of still works for our use cases. Um, and then um, I guess we kind of need to agree on some kind of like issue tracker where we just, you know, where we can, I don't know, file bugs and, and or feature requests and kind of like manage them a bit. Um, my personal preference would actually be to, to use the GitHub issues for starters because they are like already there. We just have to kind of use them. Um, yeah, I guess we kind of need to figure out if, if the CI setup is already like working or not. Um, but, you know, that would be one thing we should set up. And um, I guess then we kind of need to like agree on some ground rules. Like, is it okay to merge someone, you know, to merge the own pull requests or not? Or kind of do you have the agreement that you know you kind of need somebody else to um, review the code and, and merge that? And I guess I think that we'll we'll see the rest from there, right? Thanks, Timo. I think the most important thing is to have something like a um, a to do list. So where you you find an issue, you write it down. And also, Andre, I think you have a lot of things um, in your mind which is not perfect right now. Uh, mention that in the issue tracker, and then we can start to work on these um, in issues. Like, yes, uh, I must admit I started there in my uh, project just uh, last weekend. Uh, just last week because uh, uh, of the two four release notes. So we already have uh, Redmine, Redmine in the release notes, but that can be changed and everything else was tracked in GitHub. 
GitHub issues. So we still can choose whatever CI is set up and running. And I was, given that I was merging my own PRs because there was, if you are working on something alone, you kind of have to. Uh, so that was my only check. So I tried to make the CI, CI happy and green. And I was moving all the tests from core. So all the tests that were passing in core are passing now on the plugin. Uh, and for the own mer merge, I would be definitely against it. It's only, only possible to not have it. Uh, Right now, no one depends on that functionality. So I guess it's kind of, uh, that's how I justified my own marriages. But uh, yeah, but definitely. I think especially if now we'll have several maintainers, then it makes sense to have uh, another pair of eyes look at everything. Um, if, I guess if we see it's, kind of preventing progress, then we can revisit that. Um, some plugins, uh, people who merge their own code, others uh, make sure there's uh, at least uh, another hack from someone. Um, so I guess it really depends on the number of maintainers and uh, ability to move forward and not get stuck because no one is reviewing. Yeah, so I would be against own merging because right now I think that we are in the state that uh, everything is kind of done and what needs to be done would be perfect if someone can review because from the code it's best to learn. So I can create some PRs that whoever wants to be a maintainer would review. And that would kind of be the maintainer's uh, initial, um, initial review, so they can become review uh, maintainers. if it would make sense to everyone. Okay, so I guess that's settled. Just, uh, just the ticket system I'm still not clear on. I mean, you know, we, we can try Redmine, we can try GitHub issues. I don't know, where, where do we have, like, the most number of issues right now? Because um, from my understanding, we, we currently have both. The Redmine project, the new Redmine project has zero issues, basically just uh, the trackers for stabilization. Uh, the GitHub issues have uh, all done because that was uh, my tracking of uh, the progress of extraction. So we have zero and zero, but in Redmine in core, we have some puppet related issues. Should us five actually on GitHub. Okay, so there is some some left over. But... And, uh, regarding testing, um, correct me if I'm wrong. The current released version of the plugin should be installable with two dot four and can be tested, right? Those are the RPM packages and everything. Yes. And the uh, open pull requests in the plugin, 
is everything you know still or is everything needed to complete the extraction? Mm, most of them are just reminders and just uh, two of them are needed uh, user visible environments and puppet related settings. Okay, because I, I kind of want to suggest that we maybe create a milestone, like a 1.0 milestone in GitHub, and then we can assign the uh, PRs or issues that we kind of need to get feature parity um, to that milestone. So we can just, you know, visualize that better. Yeah. So we kind of know what's what's missing, uh, missing what, what we need to focus on and, yeah. Yep. I have one question. Um, I don't know if I understand it correctly. Um, you said it's possible to install it together with 2.4, Foreman 2.4. So what happens then? Because in Foreman 2.4, there's also Puppet in core. Uh, what happens if you install the plugin? It will uh, migrate everything to the plugin, mm -hmm. and you will be using the plugin already. Uh, so the core functionality just will be there, but will not be used. The, uh, do you have then the uh, um, well the the menu entries in in the form and user interface two times? No, no. It will replace it. Mm -hmm. Ah, cool. Okay, so we can fully test it in form in two point four and form in two point five, but in the end. The most important thing is after we um, drop the functionality in form and core, then we are well. Yeah, right now, uh, right now we can be testing it, but uh, I wouldn't like to waste much efforts on on that. Just like if it needs to be working, but uh, once we drop the code from core uh, it will it can introduce some bugs to the plugin obviously because the plugin can be depending on some core functionality accidentally so and, having it fully I'm... tested in with the core functionality still in place uh, will not make sure that the plugin fully works after the drop then an, another question, uh, mm -hmm. should we um, invest to test it with Formin 2.4 and Formin 2.5, or should we completely focus on uh, the branch which you created in Formin, where you dropped the, the Puppet support, and make sure that the plugin works perfectly with a Formin without Puppet support? Well, ideally, I would love if it works with 2.5. 2, 2. So, uh, I think the main. Already, but, yeah. Hmm? yeah, I think the main goal of having it work with 2.4 and 2.5 is giving users the ability to migrate the data uh, and not have to do that as part of the upgrade where we drop the code from core. Um, so that they can install the plugin already in 2.4 or 2.5, see that it's working, and, and then once we drop it from core, they don't care, basically, because it's already there. They have the, the, all of the data migrated, and all of the code that they're using is actually coming from the plugin already, and so that the upgrade to form and 3.0 would be transparent to them. Um, and also, I guess, in, 2.5, we should introduce um, some ability to clean up Puppet for people who don't want to use the plugin. Uh, or maybe in 3.0, kind of clean up leftovers um, like we did for the trends, uh, that if you had used them in the past but you aren't anymore, uh, and you want to clean up the leftovers that you may have, like permissions and 
database tables and relations and so on. And we'll need some sort of uh, cleanup for that as well. <laughs> so personally, I would, as a, as a customer or as a, a foreman user, I would never come to the um, idea to test um, Foreman 2.5 together with that Foreman plugin. Um, so that's my personal feeling. Um, I would um, like to to use the new plugin with a new Foreman, which doesn't have the Puppet functionality. So, um, well, I don't know if, if a user maybe would try it out to to make sure that um, the uh, the migration will work sooner or later but i will i would wait till uh, the point in time where the puppet functionality in form and core was dropped that's just my personal feeling um, I'm kind of wondering if we, if we if we should I don't know maybe um, yeah kind of de divide that that work up like for example ethics could make sure um, they kind of test that workflow how does the plugin work like on a new setup and I guess we could um, yeah invest some time in in testing how does it work um, on an existing setup. Um, and then we can kind of see, like, are there any gaps? What, you know, are there any bugs? We can work on fixing them. Yep, that sounds great. So should I set up uh, GitHub issues or write my tickets for that? <laughs> Well, my, my personal uh, preference would definitely be GitHub issues as um, they are a lot easier to work with. And, um, you know, you can easy, more easily paste like screenshots, uh, comment on them, um, yeah, sort them better, use labels. I don't know, I personally, I, I would drop Redmine completely, but that's a topic for a whole uh, other meeting, I guess. Yeah, agree. Yeah, okay. I have no issue with continuing with the GitHub issues. Only uh, one thing we should, because we have the stabilization ticket in release notes, so I would like to uh, just mark the progress somehow there. But sure. we can use the GitHub issues. Okay, so that would be to testing, and I um, can use label ready to review for some PRs in the plugin, and that would be the PRs that are uh, that I want to get in and would be great if I get some review and that's how we would establish the maintainers. I guess one review is fine and just to see if you understand the code and if you don't uh, um, we can have the session and I can prior that create some documentation or whatever resources are needed for um, lowering the entry, entry barrier for you, but I don't know what would be helpful. Like, you know, my personal opinion would be that I probably don't need a lot of documentation. I don't know.
Yeah, I don't know. What I, what I want to say is that, um, I, I don't know, I, I guess it's, you know, most of that is, is basically Rails uh, or standard Rails uh, stuff. So I guess it, it won't be that hard to to understand um, if you're kind of familiar with the, um, you know, with the, the whole form and structure with, with the models and, and controllers and stuff like that. So I guess um, if there's not any magic happening in the plugin um we we don't need to like have need, yeah i guess we don't need any documentation just to kind of get started and and get familiar with the code yeah just it's using facets so some magic is there but it's magic from core it's not introducing any new magic well and if some questions come up, we can still ask. And uh, then it would be great to, uh, well, I don't know how we want to make sure that the communication works. So, um, well, let's use IRC or we can uh, discuss it uh, on discourse, whatever communication channel um, we, we choose. But, well, personally, I would prefer IRC. Then we can qu ask questions if something is not clear um, and some <laughs> some other Ruby magic stuff is used. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm on IRC most of the working hours, so definitely if you ping me there, I will answer. And we can just figure out on the way if there is something that's hard to understand, and we can document that so other developers would have easier access. So if you have a hard time to understand something, just ping me and I will try to explain or even document it. OK, so I will create the two testing uh, GitHub issues, and I will mark PRs that would that would be good uh, to review from the maintainers. Should I archive the Redmine project? Yeah. Can we set the status of the stabilization ticket? Even mm -hmm. if it's archived. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> because we are pointing to it from the release notes. Let's maybe wait with archiving. Um, like, I, I guess we kind of need some transition period to, you know, to really get, get familiar with everything. Um, so I, yeah, my suggestion would be to kind of to let's wait four weeks, see how we, mm -hmm. you know, how this comes together, and then. Sounds good. Yeah. Also, we can update the release notes later if we have some sort of GitHub tracker. Um, those also are GitHub uh, projects that we can use if that's useful. I don't know. Um, Okay. Do we need some kind of follow-up meeting? Kind of. Do we already like want to sch schedule one? To um, no. <laughs> well, I guess in in a month or so would be helpful to get something something done before that meeting and update where we are at two point five. When is 2.5 release? Uh, Branching is about a month away. Yeah, so, so maybe one... around the 2.5 branching would be a good time to also discuss the core cleanup and um, see how we can uh, progress. So um, if I understand correctly, 1.0 should be uh, feature 30 still compatible with 2.5. Uh, 
to make sure that everything, like 1.0 is a stable release, it's still compatible with Home and Call, and 2.0 would be um, the cleanup, which drops all of the uh, checks for overriding stuff on Core. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, right away. Uh, you can do that. I mean, it's mostly, I think, code cleanup. Uh, and that would be for 3.0, but it can also be uh, after 3.0 if needed. Um, although I, I think probably it shouldn't be too difficult to get uh, to clean up some code in three months, but uh, it's uh, mostly yeah. clean up. Yeah. And then Hopefully, 4.0 will include a bunch of cool new features for the Puppet users. Okay, so time preferences in a month. It's last month of April, last week of April. About Friday the 30th mm -hmm. of April, um, 11 a.m. I'm not available on Fridays, but Ah, okay. true. You have to have me on the meeting. I think it's fine if, uh, if that works for everyone. How about? I mean, Andre did all of the work. I'm just kind of yeah, uh, trying I'll... to push. Him. We, we can we can uh, we can look for for another um, another time. What about uh, Thursday, the twenty ninth, two p.m. Does it have to be Bernard? You said it had to be before midday in general, does it? Yeah. So therefore, I well, let's let's schedule the meeting. Um, maybe Melanie can do it with a with something like a doodle or so within that week or within the next week. I think that's that's uh, well, maybe better. But yeah. But always or, in the morning, or in the morning, on 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 Thursday, or yeah, just looking at the calendar, looks like May the fourth is the two dot five branching date. May the fourth. Yeah, I'll I'll email around the doodle after this, and we can we can. Select the date that suits us in that two week period. Perfect. Thanks. Great. Uh, I'm not sure I have emails for all of you. Melanie, do you? I think I have emails for whoever accepted the calendar invite for sure. So that's, um, and then I'll trust that it'll get forwarded to mm -hmm. anyone who anyone who needs to have an opinion and then we can settle on that. So whoever, yeah, whoever receives the email from me, mm -hmm. if you can just make sure that your team members who you want at the call also are included, that would be great. Okay. So if whatever comes to your mind, ping me on RC. If I'm not doing what I've promised, ping me on RC. <laughs> I hope I will do what I've, I've said as soon as possible. And thanks for volunteering to um, take care of maintaining um, the plugin. I think it's uh, Definitely not. Um, um, ah, lost the world. Anyway, it's very appreciated. <laughs> yeah. And Andre, thanks for like preparing um, the the whole extraction. 
Yeah, I think it was our responsibility, definitely. But thank you for taking it over from from here. It's very appreciated that it's it's not gonna come in vain. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll try to make sure <laughs> about that. All right, thanks, thanks everyone. Uh, it was nice seeing you uh, again. Yeah. Thank you. Hopefully next time I will be at some conference. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> okay. So thank you. Thanks, Melanie, for organizing that meeting. No problem. Talk to you again in a month.